What one great thing would you dare to dream if you knew you could not fail? What would you do differently if you were absolutely guaranteed of success in any undertaking? What if some great force could endow you with the power to achieve any goal that you could set for yourself? To put it another way, what if you were completely unafraid of anyone or anything and you felt completely free to act in any area in your own best interest? We develop the confidence to tackle larger goals by applying our energies to the accomplishment of smaller goals. We build up our confidence as we move forward until we reach the point where there is nothing that we won't take on. In fact, the habit of setting and achieving ever larger goals is absolutely indispensable to the development of ever higher levels of self-confidence and personal power. You can only really believe in yourself when you absolutely know that you have the ability to do what you set out to do. True self-confidence comes not from positive wishing or positive hoping or positive thinking. It comes from positive knowing based on having proven to yourself over and over again that you have what it takes to get from wherever you are to wherever you want to go. Your job is to do whatever it takes to convince yourself in your heart that you are absolutely unstoppable and that you can achieve anything that you put your mind to. If self-confidence is an attitude of mind, it is based on mental principles and mental laws, foremost amongst which is thought is creative. You are not what you think you are, but what you think you are. As you systematically and deliberately change your thinking about yourself, your outer reality changes to conform with it. Your thoughts create your life, including and especially your thoughts with regard to your feelings of self-confidence. The reason why goals are so important is because of these mental laws, the consequences of which are inevitable and inescapable. You are happy and successful to the degree to which you conform your life and your thinking to these laws and live in harmony with them. The first law, which we have already discussed, is the law of cause and effect. This law is so simple and powerful that you need to remind yourself of it all the time. Everything that happens in your life, success or failure, wealth or poverty, health or illness, happiness or unhappiness, self-confidence or insecurity are all subject to this law. The Bible teaches this basic law as the principle of sowing and reaping. It says that whatsoever a man soweth, that also shall he reap. If you sow clear goals and objectives in your mind, you will reap clear results and rewards in your outer life. A corollary of the law of cause and effect is the law of attraction. This is one of the most important of all mental laws in explaining what happens to you. This law says that like attracts like. It says that you inevitably attract into your life the people, ideas, circumstances, and opportunities that are in harmony with your dominant thoughts. Just like a magnet attracts iron filings, you attract whatever is consistent with whatever you are thinking about most of the time. Because this is a law, you cannot think one thing and attract something else. Whatever you are thinking about most of the time, you are drawing into your life from all directions. This is why fuzzy goals bring fuzzy results. Clear goals bring clear results. And since your level of self-confidence is directly tied to how effective you feel you are in achieving your goals, it's very important that you know exactly what it is you want and that you think of nothing else. Another principle that affects your life is called the law of concentration. The law of concentration, as mentioned earlier, says that whatever you dwell upon continually grows in your reality. Thinking about a subject, dwelling on it continually, is like watering and fertilizing a seed. Concentration causes it to grow faster in your experience. The more you dwell on any goal or subject, the more of your mental capacities are dedicated 
to making that goal or subject a reality. The law of concentration explains why unwavering dedication to a single purpose goes hand in hand with all great accomplishment. The ability to concentrate without diversion on a single subject to the exclusion of all others explains why ordinary people achieve extraordinary things. Peter Drucker once said that whenever you find something getting done, you find a monomaniac with a mission. Because of this mental law, an average individual with average capabilities, by bringing all of his or her mental powers to bear on the achievement of a single goal, can often accomplish far more than a seemingly more fortunate person whose energies are dispersed by having several goals at once or, as quite commonly happens, no goals at all. The final mental law you need to know in the development of purpose, personal power, and self-confidence is the law of emotion. This law says that every decision you make, every thought you think, Every action you take is based on an emotion of some kind. And the two primary emotions are either the emotion of fear at one end of the spectrum of emotions or the emotion of desire at the other end of the spectrum. When you hold an emotion-charged thought in your conscious mind, it is rapidly accepted by your subconscious. Your subconscious then activates all your mental powers and begins to turn that inner thought into a result or experience in your outer world. The more powerful the emotion, the more effect it has on your thinking and actions, the more rapid the change in your experience. If the emotion is strong enough, the change can be instantaneous. You can develop this kind of belief, this inner confidence, by developing what I call the four C's. The number one C is clarity. Decide exactly what it is you want to accomplish and exactly the kind of person you wish to become. The second C is conviction. Develop the unshakable belief that you can do anything you put your mind to. The third C is commitment. Resolve to do whatever is necessary Develop the willingness to pay the price in advance for any success you desire. And the fourth C is consistency. Resolve to work on your goals every day, morning, noon, and night, until they are accomplished. When you back your goals and actions with clarity, conviction, commitment, and consistency, you're on your way to developing the kind of confidence that will make everything possible for you. The reason goals are so important in the development of self-confidence is because the very act of setting a major goal for your life activates all the mental laws in your favor. When you set a big goal, it will be as though all the switches were flipped on in your engine of accomplishment and the afterburners were turned on to your potential. Clear goals free you from the law of accident the tendency for things to happen in a random and unpredictable way. Goals give you a clear sense of direction and the knowledge that your life is self-determined. Goals give you a sense of power, purpose, and focus. They make you feel that everything that happens to you is part of an organized plan that is taking you step by step toward the attainment of your highest ideals. Your ability to set goals and make plans for their accomplishment is the master skill of success, without which very little is possible. The habit of regular goal setting and goal achieving is probably more important than any other skill you could ever learn. Over the years, I have personally witnessed thousands of examples among my students of the amazing powers of goal setting. Recently, I addressed about 600 members of a national association at their annual convention in Phoenix, Arizona. During this talk, I emphasized the importance of writing down exactly what it is they wanted and then making written plans to accomplish it. That was on a Saturday. About five days later, on the following Thursday, one of the attendees called my office to get my fax number. He said he wanted 
to send something immediately, and he didn't want to wait for the mail. The letter that came in told this amazing story. The gentleman who wrote said that he had heard about goal setting many times, and he was prepared to be unimpressed with the talk that I gave at the convention. However, exactly the opposite happened. He decided to sit down after the convention and seriously write out his goals for the following year. The letter went on to say that on Sunday he made out a list of 10 goals, both personal and financial, that he wanted to accomplish over the next 12 months. What astonished him was that he had accomplished five of the 10 goals by Monday the next day at five o'clock. He could hardly believe it. So he quickly wrote down five more goals to bring his list for the year back up to 10. And by Thursday, when he wrote this letter or fax, he had accomplished five more of the new list of 10 goals. He felt that he had made more progress in a week with clear written goals and plans than he had made in the previous year. Remember when I said that everything you do is the result of either fear or desire? Fear is and always has been the greatest enemy of mankind and it's also the greatest enemy of self-confidence. It is fear that holds us back more than any other factor. Fear of all kinds works on us unconsciously to undermine and sabotage our best intentions and our greatest hopes. In fact, as you listen to these words, you are probably thinking of a fear that holds you back in some way. No matter what you do, fear will rear its ugly head and attempt to trip you up. Sometimes the fear will appear consciously in the form of rationalizations and excuses that you use to sabotage yourself and hold yourself back. Sometimes you will find yourself avoiding goal setting by saying that, oh, I already know what my goals are. I don't need to write them down. Your subconscious mind will tell you, if you don't set any clear goals, you can't fail. This is just another way of saying that you don't really believe in your ability to do any better than you are doing right now. Fear will often appear as procrastination about writing down your goals in the first place. You will resolve to write out your goals and plans on the weekend or on your vacation or during the summertime or when you can dedicate a few hours to it or sometime in the indefinite future. Then, like 97% or more of adults, you'll never do it. You will start to rationalize and say, well, considering my situation, it probably wouldn't make any difference anyway. The founder of Success Magazine, Orison Sweat Martin, once wrote, There are powers inside of you which, if you could discover and use, would make of you everything you ever dreamed or imagined you could become. In a five-year study of leaders, reported on in his book, Leaders, Warren Bennis discovered that each of them consciously avoided the comfort zone by continuously setting higher goals. They never allowed themselves to become complacent. They lived their lives fully extended, always striving to be and do more. To develop unshakable self-confidence, you need to see yourself and think of yourself as a leader and to do what leaders do. You need to stretch yourself toward the outermost boundaries of your potential. You need to set goals that draw out of you the very best that is in you. You need to work toward objectives that cause you to feel a sense of mastery and peak performance. And it all begins with a pad of paper, a pen, and you. The starting point of setting goals is for you to throw off all mental limitations and let your mind roam freely across the entire universe of possibilities. Your primary job at the beginning is to allow yourself to dream big dreams and determine exactly what it is you want out of life in every area and in every dimension. Decide what's right before you decide what's possible. Imagine that you can be or have or do virtually anything that you really want to do as long as you know exactly what it is. First, 
Make up a dream list. Temporarily imagine that you have no limitations of time or money or knowledge or contacts or experience or education. Imagine that anything that you can write down is possible for you. Remember, anything that you can clearly define and crystallize on paper is probably possible if you want it long enough and hard enough and you're willing to make whatever efforts and sacrifices are necessary. There are no unrealistic goals, only unrealistic timelines. The very act of writing your goals down sets the whole universe to work in your favor and activates all the mental laws to help you. In fact, many people have had the experience of writing out a list of goals on New Year's Day, putting the list away and not referring to it again till the end of the year, and then finding that 80% of the goals have been achieved, sometimes in the most amazing ways. The very act of writing down big, challenging goals causes three things to happen. First, your self-concept improves and your self-confidence goes up immediately. The act of setting goals requires self-confidence and simultaneously builds self-confidence. Having the courage to write down what you really want improves your self-image and raises your self-esteem. The action itself generates a feeling of greater personal power and ability. Second, when you write down goals, you tap into your mental and emotional powers. Goal setting actually gives you a burst of physical and mental energy. Your heart rate and your respiratory rate speeds up. The very act of goal setting is inherently exciting. Third, committed to paper. The very fact that you have committed a goal to paper dramatically increases the likelihood that you will achieve that goal. Your mind is structured in such a way that you cannot write down a goal clearly on paper, not on a computer screen, without simultaneously having the ability to somehow attain it. The most important question is, how badly do you want it? There are several mental exercises that you can use to set your goals. Number one, imagine that you have just won a million dollars cash and that you can do or have anything you want with the money. What would you do first? Where would you go? What changes would you make in your life? If you had complete financial freedom, what would you do differently from what you are doing now? Number two, describe your ideal lifestyle. Imagine that you could live your ideal of the perfect life. What part of the country would you choose to live in? What kind of a company would you choose to work for or to start and run as your own? What kind of a home and car would you want? How would you like to spend your time and live your life? What kind of relationships would you want? Number three, ask yourself what you would do if you learned today that you only had six months left to live. If you had no limitations, how would you spend your last six months? on earth. This is another way of asking, what is really important to you? Who would you want to spend time with? What would you want to accomplish? What would you like to leave behind? In other words, what do you truly value? What are the things that really give meaning and purpose to your life? Number four, list all of the worries or problems in your life and write out a goal which is the perfect solution to each of those difficulties. 
If money is a concern for you, write out a goal that clearly defines how much you want to earn, how much you want to accumulate, and what you want to achieve financially over the next three to five years. Number five, think about your family and your relationships. Describe the perfect situation between you and the important people in your life, and then make out a series of goals to achieve that ideal situation. Number six, look at your health. Describe what perfect health and physical fitness means to you, and then make out a plan to achieve that level of fitness. Number seven, define the kind of person that you would most like to become, both personally and professionally. Then, work out a plan of personal and professional development that will enable you to learn and grow and become the kind of person you most admire and would most like to be. Remember, as Goethe said, before you can have something, you must first be something. Once you have written out your goals, divide them into the different areas of your life that are important. There are basically six divisions that most people use, but you can have more or fewer. The first are financial and material goals, money and things. The second are family and personal goals, the things you want to have and the things that you want to do with your family and your friends. Number three are self-improvement and educational goals, the subjects that you want to learn and get better in. Number four are spiritual goals, which have to do with learning and growth and inner peace. Number five are health and fitness goals, which may have to do with your weight and your levels of energy. And number six, social and community goals, the areas where you would like to contribute to your society in some way. To perform at your best, your life must be in balance. This means that you need to have goals in each area so that you are moving progressively forward on something that is important to you all the time. The next step, once you have all your goals in writing, is to organize them in order of priority. Select the goals that are more important than others and put them at the top of each list. Then. Select the goals that are second and third and fourth and so on. Finally, and perhaps the most important of all in goal setting, is for you to select the one goal out of all the goals that is more important than any other. This is the key to your success. The mental discipline to set your goals and to sort them out and to decide on your chief aim or your major definite purpose is the starting point of individual greatness. This major definite purpose is the one goal, the accomplishment of which will lead to the attainment of many of your other goals. This goal becomes the central focus for all of your other goals and activities. This goal is what enables you to bring all your mental resources to focus like a laser beam on one thing. Your forward progress on this one goal is what eventually generates the unshakable self-confidence that you desire. This intense focus on one goal is not easy, but it is all important. Orson Sweat Martin also wrote, The giants of the race have been men and women of concentration who have struck sledgehammer blows in one place until they have accomplished their purpose. The successful men and women of today are those of one
overmastering idea, one unwavering aim, men and women of single and intense purpose. Martin also said that every great man has become great, every successful man has succeeded in proportion as he has confined his powers to one particular channel. Single-minded concentration in the direction of your dreams will intensify your desires and increase your emotional drive towards your goal. This intensity of concentration will activate the law of attraction and begin to attract people and opportunities into your life to help you to achieve your goal. The more you think about your goal, the more it will come to dominate and direct your life. The more you think about it, the more rapidly you will move toward it and it will move toward you. Your major goal must be measurable. It's a basic rule that what gets measured gets done. Make it clear and quantitative and objective, and if necessary, break it down into smaller parts that you can work on one at a time. Your major goal must also be clearly time-bounded. Set a deadline on it. Select a realistic but challenging date for its completion and write it down. If it's a long-term goal, such as two or three years, break it down into smaller parts with minor goals or benchmarks every 30 to 60 days. Create a structure of rewards that you will give yourself upon the attainment of each part of your goal and on the attainment of your entire goal. For maximum motivation and high achievement, you need to tie each goal to a reward and each part of the goal to a smaller reward. Now, the reward may be dinner out, or a vacation, or a holiday. It may be a new car or a new home. It may be something that affects all the members of your family. Many people enlist the support and cooperation of their spouses and children by agreeing to rewards that everyone will get when the goal is attained. Rewards make the process more fun and interesting, and they act as an inner drive that propels you forward when the going gets rough. Once you've determined your major and minor goals, you construct your plans by making detailed lists of everything that you will have to do to achieve each goal, and then organizing the lists by time and priority. What will you do first? What will you do second? What is more important? And what is less important? Make each activity measurable and put a deadline on it. Select the very first thing that comes to your mind to do and get started. By setting goals, making plans, and getting started, you will join the top 3% of adults in the world today, and your success will be virtually guaranteed. A final point with regard to goals is this. Keep your goals confidential. You build confidence and personal strength by keeping your goals inside of you and by channeling your efforts purposefully each hour and each day toward their attainment. Many people make the mistake of talking too much about their goals. Too much talking causes their energies to dissipate and their motivation to decline. It weakens their resolve. They lose the force and the power they would have had if they had kept their goals to themselves and instead concentrated on purposeful activities. As Henry Ford said, you can't build a reputation on what you're going to do. Let me now give you a simple technique that has transformed my life and the life of almost every person who has ever used it. It is simply this. Get yourself a spiral notebook, the kind used in school for taking notes. Begin each day by sitting down with this notebook and writing out your main goals in the present tense as though they were already a reality. Use strong, definite words like, I earn, I achieve, or I am. You can write other things in this notebook if you like, but the most important action is that you take five minutes each day to write and rewrite your major goals without referring back to what you wrote yesterday. Handwriting your goals is called a psychoneuromotor activity.
Each time you write out your goals, you drive them deeper into your subconscious mind. You increase the intensity of your desire and the depth of your belief. You activate the mental laws of concentration and attraction and correspondence. You focus your mental powers and increase your confidence that the goal is achievable. By rewriting your goals every day, they become clearer and stronger and take on a power of their own. This exercise impresses your goals so deeply into your subconscious mind that they will eventually lock on and you will begin to move irresistibly and unstoppably toward their achievement. When this happens, your future will be guaranteed. As you develop this ability to set and achieve whatever it is you want in life, you'll develop the kind of confidence that comes from positive knowing rather than positive thinking. You will become unstoppable. Now, here are some action exercises that you can use to put these ideas to work in your life. Number one, decide exactly what you want in life. Set your goals as if you had no limitations and whatever you wrote, you would achieve. Number two, make a list of 10 goals that you would like to achieve in the next 12 months or so. Number three, write your goals in the present positive personal tense. For example, you could write, I earn X number of dollars by this date. This is personal, positive, and in the present tense. Number four, Make a list of everything you will have to do to achieve your goal and then organize the list by sequence and priority. This now becomes your plan. Number five, review your list and ask, if I was guaranteed to achieve any one goal on my list within 24 hours, which one goal would have the greatest positive impact on my life? Number six, take this number one goal your major definite purpose, write it at the top of a new page in the present personal positive tense. Make a list of everything you could do to achieve this goal, organize it into a plan, and take action on your plan immediately. And number seven, do something every day, seven days per week on your major goal. Resolve to persist on this goal until you succeed, no matter how hard it becomes or how much time it takes. This process of setting and achieving one big goal will build your self-confidence to the point where you will become unstoppable for the rest of your life.